Oh, it's a blowy old day, but at least it's not raining. Flipping heck, the amount of rain we've had in the last few, well, week or so, it wasn't that long ago I put up a video, wasn't it, saying how short rain there was in the ground. Well, as soon as I did that, that, it, well, it just, as soon as I recorded that video, what, two weeks ago or something, or ten days ago, it just hadn't stopped raining. Um, we've got a brief uh, break in the rain now, but it's probably coming back at some point, it's looking unsettled. I still haven't made my hay, which is starting to be a bit annoying now because the thing is, is the quality of it will go down, you know, I'll sort of up to mid-July, mm, June hay's the best, mid-July roughly, I'm in stewardship so you've got to do it later anyway, um, but I would have it, like to have it done by now, so that's not happening. Um, no sign of any straw either, because no one can get a combine now because it's too wet. Um, the barley's definitely ready now. Uh, by the time you read this, maybe someone, or not read this, see this video, maybe someone will have done some combining. Um, I've been on muck spreading and take cleaning out the sheds. Well, not so much muck spreading, it's cleaning them out and dumping it on a pile. Uh, so here we are now, look. I'm in our, our new shed, our new roof that we put over the yard. The, I've cleaned out all the rest of the sheds except this one. This is the one that got left because the other sheds, I wanted to get them cleaned up and out the way this one you know the cattle are still coming in here but look how high it's got that's really high that's probably the highest it's been well as long as i can remember normally expect to get up roughly to the height of that let's go and have a look to the height of this door here and it's gone up way above that so it needs a good clean out i'm a bit, little bit worried because this is the first time i've done clean this shed out with these pillars here because obviously they bolted them on extra or they put them on here and extended the shed um, but that gives me a little bit less sort of turning space well only in oh, well, that shouldn't be too bad um, so what I'm going to do I'm going to lift this ring feeder out we've been buffer feeding the heifers because of the fact that there's been no grass growing in this orchard but it's greened up quite a lot now so, so the plan this morning is Move that ring feeder out, get the loader bucket in here. Farmer Peas trailer that I bought off him a few years back, uh, gonna be there. I'm gonna be dumping on the muck pile. Poor old Harry, he wanted to do this, but he's at school. Poor old, poor old Harry. You will probably see the hay baling though. He's, he's very keen to come and take part, but um, you know, the trouble is, I can't afford to wait for him. Just because he's, you know, got he nearly finished school, I can't wait for him because I need to get on because I'll be flat out next week, no doubt if it dries up, I'll be flat out with straw and hay and everything. And my brother's away for a few days, so it'll just be me. Right, I'm going to sort this out now. Let's crack on. See, that's pretty knackered on here. Look at that. That's taken a bit of a pounding. I think the weld, I welded it once before, but something's hit it there. I'm not sure what caused that. It's pretty tired though, look. Can you see that? I mean, look at the state of all this. It's all, and the base is gone. I mean, realistically, we only get probably five years out of a ring feeder and then they're pretty well tired. They usually get whacked about a bit they rot out at the bottom, the base is always rot out, the silage eats into them and then we just get another one 
See, I probably what I'll do is I'll probably unbolt bolt half of that, use the good half, and the, and the other half be scrapped. You know, typical farmer, I always save a few bits. Right, I'm just going to drop this fork off. Fork it now, and then we're going to bucket it now. We're going to be bucketing muck out because the fork. If you use the fork, it just falls through the forks. Right, that's what my experience is. It's easier with a bucket. Let's crack on. Right, let's get that muck out. Ha <laughs> ha, muck out. We love a mucking out video, don't you? Short year cut, look. Short year cut. Mucking out. So as you can see, it's a little bit snug in here for doing this. I've got uh, just about enough room to make a sort of three point turn, but there isn't a lot of space. I mean, I took that ring feeder out just to give me some more space, um, but I'm constricted by the walls and also the RSJ that from the roof. Uh, it doesn't help I left those feeders in. I should have probably taken those out to be honest, give me a little bit of wriggle room. Um, the main thing is I just don't want to demolish a wall, do I, or, or knock a girder. So it's a case of me sort of moving around and around and around in a sort of circle, you know, sort of nudging my way around. I've done this a lot of times. How many times I clean this field, this shed out, I don't know. I cleaned this out back in the 80s when it was a, a corrugated iron black tin roof on there, a lean-to, short one. And I cleaned it out with a, a, a 35, a Massey Ferguson 35 with a loader on it. Um, and then in the probably early 90s, my dad put a different lean-to on there. And we got rid of the 35 and swapped it. Actually got rid of the 35 for this tractor in 20, 2001 or two, I think. And, uh, and then last year we put this tin roof on. So we've kind of this, seen a few different changes this yard and the tractors and vehicles in it of course the problem is every year every time you do something the tractors get bigger the loader gets bigger and it makes it a little bit harder to manoeuvre that's about as big as we can go in here All right look at that that's good stuff that is farming rocket fuel so I do my three point turn, look at here we go, look, round here. Bit tight on that. And go back round. Of course that green pillar wasn't there uh, last year. 
but um, what I did when we moved that, we put that green pillar in, we moved the gateway over that way. It's, this, it's the original gate that was there, so the aperture for me getting through is the same, but it's moved over and, and when I swing round it's a little bit tight and snug on the, on the turn in. Actually, if you take your time, it's all right. There we go, look. I'm glad we've got that trailer. It's just about the right size for there. I mean, this, this is a difference between a farm where you, you know, you design it from scratch and you start with everything perfect, hopefully, and lined up and ergonomically designed. That's a good word, ergonomically. If you can design something that is actually you know, easy to manoeuvre around and stuff, makes it better. But uh, unfortunately, most farms aren't like that. Most farms are more like ours. Whoa, let's give you some welly. Most farms are like ours. They, they've evolved over time and everyone's adapted and put on extra bits, which means sometimes they're not quite as straightforward as you hope. The good thing about this is I was, the best, well, what was really good about this is put the roof on this yard meant that we have effectively created ourselves a shed and because the yard, the concrete and the walls are already here so it's a brilliant thing because I couldn't have afforded to put up a shed here you know and by adapting it with the concrete walls and the yards already here it saved me thousands of pounds I dread to think what it would cost um, to concrete this yard and put the walls in it would be phenomenally expensive um, and I know some people said, oh, you should have knocked that wall down and put the, the, the wall out as far as the girders. But I mean, yeah, ideal world. That's when you play Farm Simulator, isn't it? When you do this stuff, everything you, you do doesn't really matter. The impact of doing that is it impacts on me not being able to buy that mower or something like that. So the money I save by not moving that wall is probably paid for the, either the fertilizer spreader or the mower. So there you go, that's real life farming. You, you compromise to, uh, to be able to do certain things a different way than maybe the ideal world so that you can afford other things. Well, it's like real life really, isn't it? Whole, life, whole life's a compromise, isn't it? Hopefully, if you compromise it correctly, you'll get through life okay. There's the moral for the day. <laughs> Everything's a compromise. Right. Let's have a look. Right, we're going to crack on with this. I haven't got far to go, and then we'll be out. Putting it on the, on the field pile. Woo! Uh, my biggest fear at the end of this is there's, there's a water pipe sticking up at the end, right? So we've just got to avoid that. Right, let's crack on. I reckon that's a pretty good load on there. We'll really get much more on there. Right, so they're not happy, are they? I've shut them out of here. They can't come up here for a drink. 
Well, they'll have to stay there till I've done what I can out of it. Oh, look, I've left some in the shovel. Look at that. I didn't whack the shovel enough and this left some. Right, I'm off. See you in a bit. Okay, so this is where you do your step up. So when I bought this trailer on Farmer P, this was a step up. Oh, I can't get that out. This was a step up for, for us from the, the wooden trailer we were using before. I got my spanner hammer. This is, as I said, this is a step up because the trailer we had before, the size of it, you've probably seen me using them for fencing, the size were about that high. So you couldn't get that much in. So I bought this off Farmer P before I knew him that well, actually. Um, just getting this up. There we go. Right. So, the, so it's a step up for us from the little trailer I had. And I think Farmer P, I call, call him Farmer P, Ian, um, probably bought a new trailer I think with a hydraulic opening back and uh, so he went from this to hydraulics that's where I'd like to go next really want a hydraulic opening back because do you know what I'm, I'm sort of climbing in and out of the tractor to do this open the back it would be much better if I could open it from the cab but hey ho this is an improvement on what I had and it's like everything one step at a time Just spotted some field mushrooms growing, look. A bit early for them. Those are definitely field mushrooms. They, obviously the muck helps, but to be honest, I don't fancy those for my tea. Right, let's get going. Let's go, back. Well, I just showed you those field mushrooms there. I mean, I think there's quite a few edible mushrooms, but I, I literally just stick to the one I know, which is the field mushroom which is basically the same as the one you buy in Tesco's or Aldi or wherever you go shop. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I wouldn't bother picking anything else. I'm a bit of a wuss like that. But uh, I never forget when I went to Italy with my friend for a holiday, we stayed at his brother's up in the woods in the mountains. And he sent us out picking mushrooms with a basket and, said, and gave us these cards with pictures on them. He said, go and pick these mushrooms, we'll have them for tea. Um, and we came back with a massive bag of mushrooms or a massive basket of mushrooms. And then slowly he went through them and went poisonous, caused diarrhea, makes you go blind, deadly poisonous, will kill you, blah, blah, blah. And we ended up with about three mushrooms out of a massive pile. So you really gotta know what you're doing. Right, we're gonna go back. I've got a lot of loads to come out of there, haven't I, really? Uh, I might just set up the um, camera and we'll just film a bit of stop motion or what. Is it stop motion you speed it up? I don't know. Well, we'll film something anyway, but um, I'm not going to get it all done today. There's no way I can finish all that today. It's already lunchtime now. The cattle want to come up. I've got to go and help my brother finish off milking at about four o'clock, so I might realistically get a couple of hours in, I think, if I'm lucky.
piece. Right. Let's get on with this then. It's nice nice to know I've done all the maester mucking out around here. I've only got this one to do. I did the one down the bottom yard with my brother. We forked out a load out of there and did the rest by hand. That wasn't too bad actually. Last year I had like, Ian Nova because my brother was on holiday and I think I just come out of hospital. But um, this year we did it all on our own. Cracking on. I've got a leak. Oh, I've caught the pipe. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> 